both probably you and I would have certain interests with the base model, what open echo is the base model, which is before the the alignment of the reinforcement learning with human feedback and and before the AI safety based kind of censorship of the model. It would be fascinating to explore, to uh, investigate the ways that the model can generate hate speech, the kind of hate that humans are capable of. It would be fascinating. Or the kind of, uh, of course, like uh, sexual language or the kind of romantic language or the all kinds of ideologies. Can I get it to be a communist? Can I get it to be a fascist? Can I get it to be a capitalist? Can I get it to be all these kinds of things and see which parts get activated and not because it would be fascinating to sort of explore at the individual mind level and at a societal level, where do these ideas um, take hold? What is the fundamental core of those ideas? Maybe the communism, fascism, capitalism, democracy are all actually connected by the fact that the human heart, the human mind is drawn to ideology, to, to a centralizing idea. And maybe we need a neural network to remind us of that. <laughs> I like the concept that the human mind is somehow tied to ideology. And I think that goes back to the, the promptability of ChatGPT. The fact that you can kind of say, well, think in this particular way now. And the fact that humans have invented words for encapsulating these types of behaviors. And it's hard to know how much of that is innate and how much of that was like passed on from language to language. But basically, if you look at the evolution of language, you can kind of see how young are these words in the history of language evolution that describe these types of behaviors, like you know, kindness and anger and jealousy, et cetera. If these words are very similar from language to language, it might suggest that they're very ancient. If they're very different, it might suggest that this concept may have emerged independently in each different language and so on and so forth. So looking at the phylogeny, the history, the evolutionary traces of language at the same time as people moving around that we can now trace thanks to genetics is a fascinating way of understanding the human psyche and also understanding sort of how these types of behaviors emerge. And to go back to your idea about sort of exploring the system unfiltered I mean, in a way, the psychiatric hospitals are full of those full of those people. So basically, people whose mind is uncontrollable, yes. who have kind of gone adrift in specific locations of their psyche, and I, I do find this fascinating. I, basically, you know, watching movies that are trying to capture the essence of troubled minds, I think, is teaching us so much about our everyday selves because many of us are able to sort of control our minds and are able to somehow, somehow hide these emotions. And, but every time I see somebody who's troubled, I, I see versions of myself, maybe not as extreme, but I can sort of empathize with these behaviors. And, you know, I see bipolar, I see schizophrenia, I see, I see depression, I see autism, I see so many different aspects that we kind of have names for and crystallize in specific individuals. And I think all of us have that. All of us have sort of just this multidimensional brain and genetic variations that push us in these directions, environmental exposures and traumas that push us in these directions, environmental behaviors that are reinforced by the kind of friends that we chose or friends that we were stuck with because of the environments that we grew up in. So in a way, a lot of these types of behaviors are within the vector span mm -hmm. of every human. It's just that the magnitude of those vectors is generally smaller for most people because they haven't inherited that particular set of genetic variants or because they haven't been exposed to those environments, basically. Or something about the mechanism of reinforcement learning with human feedback didn't quite work for them. So it's fascinating to think about that's what we do. We have this capacity to have all these psychi psychiatric or uh, behaviors associated with psychiatric disorders. Yeah. But we, through the alignment process as we grow exactly up with right. the parents, we kind of, <laughs> we know to suppress them. Yeah. We know to, how to control Every them. human 
that grows up in this in this world spends several decades being shaped into place. Yeah. And without that, you know, maybe we would have the unfiltered ChatGPT four. <laughs>